Vector embeddings are the basis for most modern machine learning applications, from large language models to vector search or recommendation systems. The big scientific break came in 2013 when this paper was released about word to vec and users began to understand the power of encoding text based on its meaning through vector representations, rather than just exact matches. Embedding models are a specific type of model that takes unstructured data like text, images, audio, or video, and encodes its relative meaning in a high-dimensional vector space. This means that we can representatively compare vectors to one another by seeing how close or far apart they are to judge similarity. This works similarly to RGB color codes, actually. You can see here, the colors closer to one another are more similar, but when we get farther apart, they're more different. We can mathematically calculate the similarity using methods like cosine similarity. This is essentially the basis of all vector search applications, except with much higher dimensional vectors. Embedding models can be trained differently for different applications, and there are several things to consider consider when you're looking for the right model fit. The first thing is looking at whether the model is fine-tuned on a specific flavor of data, like legal, medical, or fashion e-commerce text, or has capabilities for different types of modalities or languages, or if it's more of a general purpose model that encompasses multiple of these things. Models trained on specific industries might be also better able to deal with these industry terms or phrases that you might not see in other domains, or better understand how relatively important a word is. For most cases, a general purpose model like Snowflake's Arctic Embed or Gina's Embedding V3 will probably work well. If your domain is hyper-specific, it might also be worthwhile to fine-tune an existing base model on your own data to improve the quality of responses. Different models are also fine-tuned for different applications, whether it's classification, retrieval, re-ranking, or summarization. They can have different outputs based on the task, and you can usually choose a task at runtime. It's always good to check how a model performs on your specific type of application, as some will perform better for retrieval, while others might work better for summarization. How you interact with your model to actually get your embeddings is important too. If you're using something closed source like OpenAI's or Gokir's embedding models, then you probably need to think about rate limits and batch processing through the API, which can often slow down your pipeline or just provide a developer headache. However, if you're planning on using open source models, then you need to worry about hosting the model somewhere. This is often also complex and you need to maintain it, so it can take time and focus away from actually building new application features. With both closed source models and open source, the size of the model will often impact speeds and accuracy. Smaller models will be faster, but may not encode as many nuances in the data as well, so that can impact downstream task performance. If you have a use case where the main bulk of your embeddings are created in the initial batch of data, and the ingested querying is irregular and not super latency dependent, it makes running larger and better open source models more feasible. However, with applications that are latency sensitive, the need for more pricey hardware goes up, and you still might run into problems with speed and memory requirements. There are tons of other things that can impact your choice as well, such as compression techniques like Matryoshka representation learning, multilingual capabilities, or contact link. Luckily, there are more and more tools popping up to help with the decision-making process and implementation as builders realize what an essential problem this is to solve. Wevia just recently released an embedding service that will help solve problems like rate limits or provider lock-in, allowing the models to be hosted right next to the data and taking that pain away from the developers. The Hugging Face MTEV leaderboard is also great for easy access to existing open source model benchmarks, so you can compare different models across a bunch of different factors. However, I would always recommend running your own benchmarking texts for optimal results. I've done several videos recently on cool embedding strategies, but having models with advanced features is only half the battle. We also need them to be effective and easy to implement in our own use cases. This means making it easy for developers to build quickly, making our systems flexible to change, and making sure we can scale our applications as the industry grows. As always, all the resources are linked in the description.